cloudy today. 4.5 amps only. This is actually good that it is dark and cloudy outside and we don't get much energy at the moment from the roof because I have to do, I have to take the battery apart again. As you know, I still have this problem with sometimes I'm getting significant voltage drop on the terminal bus bar connection of my cells. And at the moment I'm still using the bus bars which came with the cells. As you know, I cleaned up all the terminals and bus bars with the polishing tool and greased it with a carbon grease. And then I put everything back together and the problem persisted. So, well, just this week I got a delivery from Powerpol Australia. Paul was so kind and he made a little donation to the off-grid garage here. Paul is an amazing guy. We are texting on Messenger all the time. He's got his whole house off-grid already. Well, anyway. And this is what Paul has sent me. Look at these beautiful bus bars here. Laser cut aluminium bus bars. <laughs> when I unwrapped this, this package here, I said, oh, they need some work with my polishing tool. But then I turned them around and they are mirror-like. Look at this, beautiful. They are super smooth and nice corners and edges. Really well done. Four millimeters thick they are, so they are quite... So this is the normal bus bar. So there's the normal bus bar, the copper bus bar, which came with the cells. And this is the aluminium bus bar I will put in the battery now and you can also see they are a lot wider and a little bit longer especially in my case because I've got a little gap in between the cells I'm a non-compressing guy and this will fit perfectly and will cover the whole terminal of all the battery cells so I'm really keen to put them on I have mounted two of them already in one of the cells which had um, voltage drop all the time and I had to undo the screw a little bit and then tighten it again. You, you have seen this in the other videos before, so I had this issue. There is a contact issue somewhere. Well, I cleaned this all up. I cleaned up the crease underneath, cleaned up the contacts with alcohol again. Well, some leftovers I didn't drink before. And I have mounted two of these aluminium bus bars already here on this battery number six. As you can see they do a perfect fit around the terminals on both sides and I still got the gap in between and the original ones are always a bit short. You can stretch them apart a little bit if you have a gap but then they are not covering the whole terminal anymore on one side because they are a little bit too short. So these ones do, so they are a lot wider and a little bit longer. Perfect for my situation here. And I will fit them on all the cells right now. So 3.9 millimeters are the new aluminium bus bars. And 1.9 are the old ones, the original ones. So twice as thick. And you can see it here. So they are twice as thick as the original bus bars. Almost 4 millimeters. And here you can see they are a lot wider and a little bit longer as well. I haven't got time during the next week, so I need to get this done today. Even, uh, even the sun is now peeking out here. And I'm probably missing out of a couple of ampere hours. But uh, these bus bars... And I need to get rid of this uh, grease underneath as well. It seems to be the ones I've cleaned up so far, they don't have any problems anymore. Uh, this conductive crease is not the right one and I don't have any copper paste or something, welding copper paste or something, I don't have this. And um, the battery terminals are aluminium and the bus bars are aluminium, so there should be no problem in terms of corrosion. And um, if I come across some welding copper paste in the future, I will probably buy a can and apply this if necessary. Yeah, so unfortunately we have to turn off power again. No solar and no inverter off. So as you can see the BMS, the BMS is still running and the smart shunt are still running of course because they are connected before the switch. So uh, thank you again Paul for your contribution here to the off-grid garage. 
uh, of course I just disconnected the whole system and now we've got pure sunshine here uh, what the heck okay let me show you the situation here as an example on one of the bus bars BMS will start beeping now and I take off the ring lock that's fine and you could hear the relay <laughs> okay let's take out this one you can see the remainder of the crease underneath okay this gives me the shoes already I'll just disconnect the BMS so here you can see the carbon grease on the bus bars both ends and also here on the terminals and I think and people have actually left some comments here on this crease which you can buy at JCar here in Australia and they did some testing and they said it's not conductive at all so it has a fairly high resistance and therefore is probably not ideal to put this on electrical contacts I'll take some alcohol now and wipe this all off look at the size of the bus bar and the size of the terminal so it fits perfectly on top of it and covers the whole terminal area and also I have enough play here to actually space out my cells it's pretty good Alright peeps, I think we are done. Replaced all the bus bars with the aluminium laser cut bus bars now. Tighten all the screws again and cleaned up the terminals and contacts of course. So hopefully I don't have any terminal bus bar high voltage problems anymore now. I can pull 100 amps here without any problems. Okay, let's wait until I can hear the inverter clicking. It just did. Now we can turn on the switch. No spark, no high current inrush. Okay, let's plug in the BMS again. Everything is up and running. We just need some solar power. Okay, just looking at the BMS. So cell number one, two, three and four was the first delivery. And they are always the highest cells in the whole pack. Number five, six, seven and eight were the second delivery. Always the lowest apart from cell five. And then nine to sixteen was the Carlotta delivery. There was the third one. And they seem to be okay. Yeah, even number five, six, seven, and eight is was one delivery, so there should be matched capacity, internal resistance, voltage, and everything. But you can see they are always different. Six, seven, and eight are always low, always. We should do a full power test right now. Okay, I have to turn off solar, so we purely power the car charging from the battery. So we are pulling now 2300 VA, you want me to say what? And um, look at cell number 6, how low it is. All the other cells are above 3.2 volts, easy, but 6, 7 and 8 are not. And 6 is even far, far, far under all the other ones. This is all cold. It feels metal cold. Okay, number 6. I'm just tightening slightly and see if this makes a difference. 176. Okay, just now. Uh, almost nothing. 
okay negative okay just drop a little bit better okay so these are the connections I have made a couple of days ago already as for testing for the bus bars and I may have to clean up the contacts again because it was dark and I was using my torch here to get this all done because well when I disconnect the battery the light turns off we are off grid so probably I take these ones apart again and clean the contacts just to make sure there's nothing with cell number six and then we test again okay I have now cleaned all these contacts here leading to cell number six I have tightened everything again well no surprise it is still the lowest in the whole pack but uh, we give it another try and start charging again so 60 amps okay now you can see all the voltages this is at 60 amps only I still have either a problem with the connections bus bar terminals or the pack is so unbal unbalanced or well possibility number three is the cells are all mismatched <laughs> I've got two testers coming in to test the cells individually uh, they haven't arrived yet so hopefully they are coming soon and then we can test all the cells individually and can see if they are mismatched or not well until then I leave it as it is. I'll fully charge the battery now and try to top balance it again with the BMS and see um, if this makes a difference. Yeah, this is all cold. You can feel. Yep, yeah, this is all fine so far apart from the um, cell number six <laughs> have I mentioned this before actually but apart from that all the other cells are in line but apart from that all the other cells are pretty much the same in the mid 60s mid 70s 65 okay six seven and eight are lower and one to four are higher so I think we've got a good combination a good mix of cells here they send us and nothing is really matched to each other. And of course I also read all your comments about the inverter saying well Andy this is far too small for you. You should have gone with a 5 kilowatt or even an 8 kilowatt inverter for your high load here and charging an electric vehicle. Well as I said many 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 times before I don't need to charge the car on 10 amps. If I charge it only on 8 amps or even slower that is totally fine. I've got so much time to charge the vehicle here at home. I don't need to charge on 10 amps or 12 amps even or even faster. I don't need that. So I've chosen the inverter size wisely. It needs to run the garage. The garage consists of the irrigation pump with about 800 watts which runs about an hour each day. I've got my workbench here with all my tools. It's probably a maximum another quarter of kilowatt hour each day. I mean look at this. We've got the irrigation pump running here. I'm using the vacuum cleaner at the same time and also other power tools and there's no issue. And sometimes, sometimes I run the mulcher and the electric chainsaw from it and if the mulcher gets stuck with a big branch in it and the inverter turns off, well, that's just what it is, right? You don't want to spend a lot of money on a bigger inverter just for the occasional usage of a mulcher or a chainsaw. There was nothing, there was nothing wrong running these machines for several hours yesterday from the inverter. The, the only thing I could actually feel here with the mulcher is um, if you turn it on you have to hold the button a moment until the motor starts spinning up while if you plug it into the grid directly you push the button once and the motor starts up so the grid obviously gives you more amps more power to start the motor while here I have to just hold it for a second until the motor winds up and then it's good 
So you can feel it's a different situation to the inverter or in comparison to the grid. But it's not a big deal. It's not like it's not working or it's, it's inconvenient or something. It's just different, you know. You need to get used to it. And so far, everything is working fine. No other issues. All right, guys. So far, this video from today, we have replaced all the bus bars now. We still have problems with 6, 7 and 8, of course. I will now fully charge the battery from solar here. And... Um, yeah, see if we can balance the whole pack a little bit better. Uh, many people have left some comments under my videos how to charge the battery correctly. So I probably shouldn't charge it to only 3.35 volts, but go a little bit higher. So we will see how this all works out. I um, still haven't figured out how everything works correctly, but I will of course let you know everything I found out here and everything I experience here on the channel. This is what it is for, right? Sharing the experience so other people can laugh and learn. Yeah, doesn't matter. I'm good with that. All right, guys, so far, as always, thank you so much for watching today. Thank you for all your feedback here, all your comments, all your support here on the channel. Stay charged, stay safe, and we shall see us again in the next video coming soon. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye. So, I know people will and have already left comments about replacing your copper bus bars with aluminium bus bars. Because in general, aluminium has about a 39% lower conductivity than copper. So it's actually bad to replace copper with aluminium. And now you could ask, why is aluminium actually better than copper? Well, as always in life, size matters. Well, I found the rectangular conductor resistance calculator online. <laughs> I, did, I didn't know this exists actually, right? But on this website you can actually um, select different materials and put in the dimensions of the material and then it calculates the resistivity and the resistance in ohms for you. And I've done the calculations for both, for the original, for the original copper bus bars here and also for the new aluminium bus bars. So I put in the dimensions for the copper bus bars which came with the cells. 7 cm long, 15 mm wide and 2 mm thick. And we got a resistance of 39.2 micro ohms for this particular bus bar. If you do the same calculation for the aluminium bus bar, 7.5 centimeters long, they are a little bit longer, 20 millimeters wide and 4 millimeters thick, you are getting only 24.9 micro ohms. So this is a reduction of 37%. So as you can see, actually the aluminium bus bars have a lower resistance than the copper bus bars, which I didn't expect I thought, okay, they are thicker, they are wider, they are a little bit longer. So this should actually level out with the copper bus bars. They should be on the same ballpark. But, but it is 37% better than the copper bus bars. So there you have it. I link this calculator down below if you want to do your own calculation for your bus bar situation. And if you want your own copy of these amazing aluminium bus bars, please get in contact with PowerPoll, link is down below. Negotiate a good price. And I think he's also able to send you these aluminium bus bars if you're not living in Australia, because I know he's living in a post office. <laughs>